Hello, Paul McFadden here. So on this video, we're going to talk about one thing that if you change, and it's not going to be blatantly obvious, but if you change this, it's going to make a massive difference in your property business as you go forward. And as always, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to be notified when more video content goes out. So what is this one big thing? Now I observe this with many people who are involved in property. First and foremost, because I've been involved in property for over a decade myself, and I've got many clients who are getting started in their property journey. Now I always talk about this, find a mentor, find a coach, find someone who's further down the path that you want to travel so you can learn from them, effectively learning from their mistakes. And I do this in all areas of my life, not just in business and wealth creation, but in my relationships relationships and being a better father and, and my fitness and health, I'm always seeking out those who have achieved things at the highest, you know, high performers in whatever industry they are and I learn from them because this is how you can learn and fast track your own journey by learning from other people's mistakes. And with this in mind, something that I see many people make in terms of becoming a property investor is that they get caught up in the noise. Now, what do I mean by this? Let me tell you my own personal story and let me tell you how you can change this and you're going to see that you, yes you, are the actual problem in your property business. And it might not seem that obvious and how you need to then replace yourself in a sense to think bigger and cut the noise in order to let, let your business effectively grow. So let me explain. In the early days when I got started my property journey, I never really had a coach or mentor. Sure, I invested in my education, got some personal development and all of that stuff. But for me, it was a lonely journey involved in property, so I never knew any better. So when I get started in property, I was the person that was going out there doing lots of viewings. And I've got news for you, you've still got to do that if you're getting started in your property journey. So the things that I'm going to say you do, to a certain extent, have to do these things, like getting out there and networking. I mean, if you don't know people, then how do you expect to grow a business? How do you expect, you know, for people to want to interact and engage with you if you don't get out there and meet people, if you don't put yourself out there on social media, if you don't do all these things to be noticed, then no one knows who you are. You've got to get out there and view property, a lot of properties, so you get a feel for things. So you start to observe and see opportunities. You know, doing your due diligence, being on Rightmove and all the different, you know, internet portals where you can view properties, start, start to see and identifying opportunities. Kicking off some marketing and maybe doing some of the marketing stuff yourself. And then this one here is a big one that really pulls people in is that when you do eventually buy a property, you actually do the work yourself. Now that's a big no-no, which we're going to talk about in a moment, but in the early days, yes, I was the person getting in and doing all the rip out, trying to save a couple of hundred pounds. I was the person picking up the paintbrush, because paint and decorating was pretty much the only thing that I was decent at, couldn't do any of the other specialist trades, so I would try and cut the cost by doing some of the paint and decorating myself. And I would be running around, picking up the materials, and I'd be haggling over the pennies and the pounds to try and save some money and not understanding that while I was focusing in on being a paint decorator and I was focusing in on you know picking up the paint and the different materials and doing the pull out you know the the, the rip out of the property myself and basically being involved in the nitty-gritty and the detail doing all the paperwork and all that stuff for, for the mortgage broker and everything else when I was applying for the mortgage and all the solicitors paperwork and getting overwhelmed of all the noise what I realized is that I was just a busy fool. I was working in my business and not on my business. And that one thing alone, I heard many people talk about this. I'd been to lots of business events, a lot of different you know, personal development events where they keep on talking about you need to work on your business, not in your business. And even though I heard this repeated many, many times, the penny still didn't drop for me. It was almost as if it was going one year and out the other. And I say this even to this day for people that we coach and support on our Property Protégé program, that you don't have, how can I, you know, save some money by doing the electrical work or the paint decorate work myself or even worse, saving 10% on the rental, you know, that you would, the rental fee that you would pay a letting agent, you know, you're not wanting to try and save 10%. That's not your problem. Your problem is, where's the next deal? problem? Where's your next £100,000 raise and joint venture partner problem? Where's your next, you know, preferred invest? Whatever it may be, 
focusing on the right things. But while you're getting focused up in all the noise, getting caught up in admin and paperwork and, you know, all the nitty gritty stuff. And some people say to me all the time, Paul, why don't I see more stuff online about you and your properties and the different flips that you're doing? Well, here's the difference. In the early days, I did all of this. Over a decade ago, in my early 20s, I was that busy fool. In fact, I learned the hard way because it took me till I was like 26, 27 to really understand having been in business, well, I thought I was in business by being involved in property for five, six, seven years and wondering why my business wasn't growing. And the fact was is that I was stifling my business. Yes, me, for two reasons. One, I didn't trust anyone around me to hand off a certain task because again what's the things that we always talk to ourselves about maybe you've said these things yourself if you want a job done do it yourself if you want it done right then don't rely on anyone else and these are the things that was brainwashed into me that I then strained my business due to my own capacity and wonder why I couldn't grow and I came a point where I was making a lot of money and things were, were, were starting to really grow and I, and I kept on investing into my business. The one thing that I focused on investing was into the marketing because I knew that if I spent money in marketing to source more properties, then I could make more money. So I understood that. After all, if you buy a property and you go and add value to it and then you either rent it out or you sell, you know, that's how you increase the value of that property. That's how you make more money. Same goes if you spend money in marketing, you're looking for a return on your investment. And I understood that from marketing. But I was doing all that myself as well and wondering why I kept on tapping out. And I observe and see in the property market just now people who are proud to say that they're still working inside their properties, showing up and doing the viewings and, you know, taking pictures of the refurbs and all this kind of stuff and get out there doing the marketing and managing their own properties and doing the paint decorating or whatever it may be and be proud of that. And that's perfectly fine. I'm not saying that you should change if you're getting a lot of fulfillment and excitement out of picking up a paintbrush and painting your own property. But just know that if the goal is to be financially free, if the goal is to replace your income and get time freedom, then why would you create time freedom through property? Because that can do that for you to then leave whatever job or whatever business you're in to then create yourself your own job and understand that you'll have a ceiling. Just like personal trainers. Now, most people can understand a personal trainer because a personal trainer exchanges their time and there's many different industries that do the same thing, but let's keep it on this example. Personal trainer exchanges their time and how much can they charge per hour? 40 pounds, 50 pounds. If they're really good, they might be able to charge 60, 70 pounds an hour. But what happens when they fill up all their time? then they need to make a transition to do a number of different things. One, they need to then do, you know, group PT sessions or, you know, boot camps and stuff and try and sell more to many people, but then they have to dilute their price. Maybe they need to create a, a coaching program which they can sell online and that takes up time and energy and it's, a, it's basically a false economy that they keep on building and the reason is is because they are still involved. So what I learned at the peak of my property journey is I thought, okay, what if I start bringing in some staff, what if I start outsourcing, what if I start cutting noise, then maybe my business might just grow. Maybe it'll, if it grows without me and it's still growing year on year and it's starting to thrive, then I've got the very thing that most people crave in life. Because I created financial freedom, I was making a lot of money through property, but I was still a busy fool. The business was still dependent on me. I couldn't take a holiday for several months. I couldn't disappear. I couldn't stop turning up working day in, day out. Even though I was working for myself, I was still grinding and working 100 hour work weeks. And then what I decided to do was to trust people and understand that some people are going to make some mistakes and it's the only way that they're going to learn. So the first person I employed was a personal assistant. That person is my sister because again, I had trust issues. So I decided, well, maybe I can trust someone who's family and she's still with me to this day. And that was my first hire. And then she would do all my admin stuff, all my PA type stuff, booking appointments and dealing with some of my own personal stuff. And instantly I thought, okay, great. I've got a bit more time freedom. Wow, I don't need to worry about buying materials and organizing certain things because she's doing all of that. I don't need to worry about the paperwork and the admin because she's doing that. I don't need to worry about, you know, thinking about people's birthdays to buy them certain things because she could do all that stuff. I thought, this is great. 
So I got more time freedom and I thought this is, this is different, this feels weird. I can now focus on the things that really make a difference. And then the next person I hired was someone who could come in and take care of the marketing. Then I hired someone that could come in and assist me with doing the due diligence on deals. Then I had other people that came in and they understood what, how I thought and my criteria, everything that I still teach are proteges, so they could go out, do the viewings, they could project manage all the, 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 the different refurbs or the buy to lets, they could look after everything. I literally went about outsourcing all things. So over the last, what, four stroke five years, I've never had to go and view property. I don't have to view property because I have other people doing that for me, working on the basis of my checklist and everything I tell them to look for and what my criteria is and basically explain to them what type of properties to invest. I don't even look at the, the before and after pictures, the refurb and any of that stuff. I don't get caught up in any of that. So when people say, well, Paul, are you still involved in property? I don't see you posting stuff online and social media. Well, yes, um, you know, uh, you know, forgive me for not, you know, being out in all these properties, taking pictures and all that stuff and putting it online. I'm kind of past that. I've been through there. I have grafted. I've been in the trenches. And guess what? If you're watching this, you still need to do all that as well. I'm not saying that you don't do that stuff, but don't take the six, seven years it took me to start outsourcing, start bringing other people on board and start focusing on the right income producing activities is actually going to make you money and ultimately focusing on your business. So the point in this video is twofold. One, you have to be in the trenches in the early days. There's no getting away from that. You can't get away from getting out there and doing the viewings when you're just getting started. You can't get away from getting out there and building your network if you're just getting started and, and then working with your power team and pulling in the different people. You will be working in your business at the beginning. Have no illusions around that. But you do not need to take six, seven years like it took me to start building a team. We've got people who go through Protege who start bringing on people to support them and help them. And a lot of things that can be outsourced that doesn't involve you having employees. You can outsource almost everything in your life, but you've also just need to take the leap to do that, starting off small. And then before you know it, other people are taking care of the things that you probably didn't want to do in the first place. And it means it frees up the time for you to do the very things that you enjoy and get a buzz out of, the things that get you excited to get out of your bed in the morning to go and do. And that might be just simply spending time with your family. Get out and taking up a hobby or something that you enjoy and spending more time doing that. Or it might be just like me being a freak, still wanting to work in my business. But I'm working on the business, not in the business. Because I can tell you this, the moment that I made that transition to work on my business, I could think freely. I could watch. I had time freedom to come up with new concepts and new ideas and then I could go and implement that. I could then invest in other type businesses and arguably, arguably I'm involved in a number of different businesses, not just property related, but the same mottos apply. Find people that are better than you, bring them on board, coach them, support them, get them to think like you and then they can run other stuff for you. This is why Richard Branson owns hundreds of companies and lots of different industries and he is having a success in a lot of those companies. Why? Because he's identified key people and he works on, not in the businesses. So that was the one transition that made a big difference for me and the transition that I see many people resisting to make that transition. And if they could only do that, starting small and then starting to then allow that to spread into more areas of their life, they're going to realize that they've actually got a business that they can start to expand and grow and have what everyone, I don't care who you are, craves in life. The choices and options to whether they show up to their place of work or not. And more importantly, their business is growing month on month, year on year, with or without you. And that's the key thing. So I hope you get some lessons learned in here. I hope if you're looking into your business, maybe take some time and even comment below. Comment below and tell me some of the things that you're working on just now that you are transitioning over to outsourcing that's going to free up your time to move forward. Or maybe you've got some questions in general about some of the stuff I've covered. So comment below. I take the time to go in there and answer your questions. So take one step at a time and I look forward to seeing you outsourcing, building a team and before you know it, start to really build a proper business. So as always, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. All the best and bye for now.